Hello YouTube and welcome to Virtual Worlds Unreal tutorial series. In this series we're going to be covering many aspects of Unreal production, different game development techniques to get things achieved. In this video we're going to be learning the basics about layout and navigation. First of all what you're going to want to do is download the Unreal 4 uh, development kit which is Unreal 4 engine which I believe the current version is on 4.22 one or something like that I'll leave the link in the description where you can download it it's free to use the only stipulation is if you earn so much every quarter you have to pay them like 10 or 15 percent other than that it's free to use if you don't earn that much you don't owe them a thing all right let's get started once you've loaded it up you'll see you'll see this in your tray icon or you'll see it on your desktop it's called epic games launcher you load that up then you'll be presented with this in the top right it'll say launch because I've already got it installed on yours if you haven't got it installed it'll actually it'll prompt you to install the latest version of Unreal Engine so you go ahead and do that and then you load it up and then when it's loaded up you'll be presented with this screen and this is asking you you can load up old projects or but we'll click on new projects and this is asking you what type of project you want to create whether it be a first person a third person a top down a puzzle or anything like that and these are the settings for it down here this is what platform you want to produced to whether you want it desktop or console desktop and console on mobile and tablet we'll leave it on desktop and console this is the type of quality you want we'll leave it on maximum and this is real without starter content we'll leave it with starter content we'll give it the name my project by default that's what it's called so we'll go ahead and click create project it'll just take a little while a little moment to load up it shouldn't take too long Still busy thinking about it. We're nearly there and we're in. It's just about to load now. Here we go. And this is what you'll be presented with. A default scene, default level. What you can do if you want to create a new a new level, you go to file a new level then you'll be presented with this this is the default one this is for virtual reality and this is an empty level i suggest if you're new you click on the default one and this is what you'll be presented with a basic floor mesh some lights and a player start all right we'll go through it up here you have your file your edit your window and your help under file you have things like new level open level save current save all new project and open project under edit you have undo and redo and delete and duplicate. Edit to preferences, which is useful for setting up the editor the way you want it, whether you want auto save on or not, and things like that. Project settings, which you'll be using quite a bit to use things like input key mappings and quality of your project. Then window, just you can bring up different windows if they're not already shown by default. And then under help, you have the help files. And directly beneath that you have the modes panel this is the place one is where you can select if you click on that you can actually select things see i've just highlighted that you can tell by the contours around the outside of the mesh then you've got paint then you've got landscape for creating terrain then you've got a different type of paint which is foliage which is for placing down things like trees grass rocks all that sort of stuff on your terrain then you've got the geometry editing if i was to click on edit you can do certain things here like extrude it brush clip edit it and things like that flip it optimize it and all that sort of stuff that's that only works really with geometry like bsp brushes that's not meshes we'll go back to place tab under here you have recently placed that just show you what you've recently placed down in case you want to access it again quickly basic has things like um your cubes don't bother using cubes from here you want to go to geometry for that but basics not really that useful apart from player start which i find is very useful and you've got the lights directional light is the overall light for your level which is like the sun which direct, which casts light in all directions but you can choose the direction this is directional light here look 
and as you see this arrow here is pointing down this direction that's the way it's pointing that's where the light will be projected then you have point light which is if you drag it in is a light in all directions and when you've dropped it in you've seen you'll have the properties panel over here the details tab and you can change things like the attenuation radius which will make the radius of the light bigger smaller you have intensity which will make it brighter or darker or less bright sorry we'll go ahead and delete that you have a spotlight which just casts a light in one direction as you can see it's facing down that's the cone showing you where the light is projected then you've got the intensity the attenuation radius and other properties whether it casts shadows and whatnot and then temperature if you want to use the temperature of the scene we'll get rid of that then we'll go down to visual effects under here you have post processing volume which is used to apply the visual fidelity of the whole scene so you can have different colors temperatures all sorts of different effects and you have other properties in here as well you can set geometry is very useful for creating bsp brushes which means binary space partition and they're not meshes they cost a lot more resources to use but they're good for simple fillers like brick walls and whatnot if you don't not got too many or you want to subtract from a brush you want to put holes in it but you can convert your brushes to static meshes then you've got your volumes such useful things as nav mesh bounds volume which if you place that down like this and we just put it in the floor a little bit then press p on the keyboard give it a second and that green area shows when you set up your ai properly that that this is the part this is the area which they'll be allowed to move along this area here you need a nav mesh you need a nav mesh bounds volume to be able to get the ai to move when you programmed it via blueprints or c++ scripts and that's it for the, the modes tab up here i've saved current to save your level you've got content marketplace if you click on marketplace that'll take you to the marketplace where you can buy additional assets or get some free ones settings is important you'll be finding you'll be going to the world settings and project settings quite a bit if you load up project settings you can see here look what it looks like if we expand that you can see it's got useful things like maps and modes under there you can change the default map it loads up to and under input things like that you've got um if you click on action mappings the plus arrow then click the drop down arrow you can now give it a name let's get a drop down arrow and you can assign a button that you want it to be uh what you want to activate the command with so if we want the flashlight we could we type in flashlight there and then type it go to something like keyboard and look for the f key See that one it'd be called flashlight up there then you can go ahead and use that in your in your blueprints and program it in that's project settings blueprints if you click on that what you have got this one's very useful open up level blueprint if you click on that and load it up every script in here your blueprint script will start as soon as the level happens so if you want if you want and it'll only, be, it'll only apply to the level you're working on so if you want something that happens later on with your characters or your, your map or anything like that you wouldn't put it in the um the level blueprint but if you want something to happen straight away like music for the whole level that starts when the level starts you'd put it in here you know cinematics build is quite useful obviously when you've if you've got artifacts in the game like lights not casting properly or anything then you go to build lighting only or lighting quality you can add set to preview until you're ready for your final render then choose production quality and you can you can click on build geometry for just to build the world build path lod's and build and submit if you want to submit your level to epic epic storefront and then map check so this comes up with any errors or anything like that you've got and then you, if you want to build everything just click on that don't bother clicking on the drop down arrow if you want to play your map just click on play by default just click on the drop down arrow it shows it's going to be played in our viewport if you click play as you can see we're now moving around the viewport in our game just press escape to get out of there but if you want to go full screen and see what it looked like in standalone game 
you click on the standalone game. And you've got launch. You've got a handy tools tip up here. In here, your world outliner, this is everything that's been placed into your scene, you can find in here. And this is the details panel. So whatever you've got selected, if I click the mesh, it'll change and these will be the properties for the mesh and so on and so forth. Down here is your content browser. This is where all of your assets are stored and all your scripts, all your characters, everything, textures, materials, everything like that. If you want to import something new, like a new character model or a new material or a texture or an FBX model or something like that, you would click on import and then you'd browse to the, to the asset and you click open or you can just open up the folder via Windows Explorer and drag it into your content browser. If you click on this button here, it says show or hide sources panel, it'll bring up your exact content browser but in a hierarchy and you can drag your assets into this hierarchy here. Save all, we'll save all your assets in the project. So a good idea when you're saving is click save current. And if you're not sure about it, save your project, uh, your files in your project since you've updated them last year, whether you've imported new assets and whatnot, you click save all. And up here, if we just zoom out a bit, you have select and translate objects. If this one was selected, it'll bring up a little widget with three directions, X, Y, and Z values, left, right, up, and down. So now we can move it along. But if, 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 it's, if you want to snap to the grid, you've got to make sure this one's on for your move. And it's on 10, so if we put it on, say, 100, as you see, it's now staggered in 100 unit increments. See that? It's snapping. So the higher the number, the more, the more snapping you'll have. And this one is rotate objects. So if we just click on this and hold down the left mouse button and move, say 40, it's now 40 degrees rotated. That's with the snapping on. If you want to turn the snapping off for that one, you click on this one, it says enables or disables snapping objects to, to a rotation grid. So now when we rotate it, it moves it freely. We'll turn the rotation grid back on. And if you click on this one, this will scale the object. If we click on the bottom one, it will scale it at all. We can click on the this axis and it will scale it that way. If you want to turn off this scaling snapping, you click on this one here and it'll move it freely. You can also change the the scaling parameters up here, bigger or smaller, same as the rotation. You can rotate by five degrees, ten degrees, fifteen, thirty, forty five, sixteen, ninety, and so on. And that's pretty much it for the basics YouTube. If you've liked this video, it's been useful at all, please give it a like. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. Thank you for thank you very much YouTube for watching and have a great day.